Howdy, Mike McCoy here. Today let's talk about dry kills. We had a dry kill for all four five years and done right well with it. And it was a small dry kill. It was a Nile electric unit. And uh, I bought the thing on a whim. I, I didn't even, it sat in my garage for a year for I didn't even know if it worked for I just bought the unit. I could have bought the whole building and everything, but is in Maryville, Tennessee, and that's about 100 miles from here, and it's like 14 foot wide, and I figured it'd cost more to get it here than it'd be worth. So we built a new building, and uh, put it in, and it's a nice little building, and we insulate it and everything. If you got to really insulate something like that, and put it in there and plugged it up and cut the little unit on it, and it sat there and worked. And uh, it burnt. It'll either be three or four years ago this April. I think it'll be four years ago this April. And uh, that, that's pretty devastating to us. I didn't think I had that much money in it till I sat down the night after it burned and put a pencil to it. And I probably lost $10,000 if you added the value of the lumber and every, you know, everything. But like an idiot, I didn't need insurance, so it don't matter what it's worth. But anyway, if, if you've got a smaller mill, like these guys, these little band mills and stuff, if you get you like a thousand or a two foot, two thousand foot kill, you can really add some value to your product there. And uh, like these solar kilns, they, uh, as far as energy and stuff, they don't hardly cost anything to operate. For now, that now uh, I had it was electric and it cost probably a hundred and fifty dollars to kill a charge with it, you know. And I've talked to two or three people that's got these solar kills, and I've heard good things and bad things. You'll have to do your own research on it. I know Virginia Tech has got some of the best information on building plans and stuff when I've seen in the, at Woodweb. They, they've got a lot of good information on dry killing and, and so forth. But yeah, you can build you a solar kill and get you a good moisture meter. They're not cheap, but you know, get you a good one and that way you'll know more what you're doing when, when you're checking it and stuff like that. But uh, I done right well with it and, and even these bigger mills, me and Wade talked about dry kills and stuff. And, I had four or five books here, and I took him one, for that's all I could find. We put that up somewhere. That, that had a lot of information on dry kills. And and you need all the information you can get if you're going to put one up. For dry killing is almost an art in itself. Uh, like the first time I dried any cherry, I had some really nice cherry, and I wanted to take good care of it so I could get top dollar. And we cut it and put it on sticks for a few weeks and then put it in the kiln. I used a real gentle schedule. And when we took that stuff out of there, it was warped and cupped and everything else. And I talked to that friend of mine. It's, it, it is a dry kill, man. He said, you run about that backwards. So you, you've got to dry cherry fast. And the next I dried, I dried it fast and had way better luck with it. And oak's hard to dry. Oak is rude. For me, oak is the hardest wood they are to dry. For if you get a bit aggressive with it, it'll honeycomb. If it honeycombs, it's just virtually worthless unless they're building like real rustic furniture out of it, you know. And another thing, if you're thinking about a dry kill and you're a smaller operation, be real cautious about sawing somebody else's logs and drying them for them. For when I first started out in this business, there was an old boy up there in Asheville. He's a young guy. He's younger than me. And he bought a new wood miser band mill and put in a dry kill. I think, I believe he put in two dry kills, 15,000 feet to the kill. And some guy hardly even saw a bunch of oak, and he saw a bunch of red oak, like 30,000 feet, and honeycombed every foot of it. And the guy... I think wound up a law in him, but anyway, he had to buy that lumber. And it, it basically bankrupted him. I don't think he ever did recover over that. And 
that's something for you to think about. You know, if you're drying your own lumber and you mess it up, you know, the time and whatever you had in it's what's going to cost you. But now if you're drying somebody else's lumber, they can be thousands of dollars tied up right there. I know the whole time I had my one, I wasn't dry nobody else's lumber. I just dried my own. For I just, I told him, I said, I'll saw it for you and you can take it. This guy, I know one's one, I know one, he can dry it for you. I won't dry it. And this guy, just one, I know was good. I mean, he'd, he'd been around enough to know how to do it. But like eight quarter oaks, I just couldn't do it. Never was able to. I tried it two times and honeycombed it both times. Poplar dries good. You can just put poplar in there and cut it wide open and cook it. Pine, same way. Walnut and cherry, they dry good. And, uh, it, you know, it's just a matter of learning what you're doing and, and sticking with it and watching it. For uh, my kill burnt. And I, to this day, I don't know exactly what burnt it. I don't know if it was vandals or something shorted out in the unit. All I know is it burnt to the ground. The phone rung about six o'clock that morning. Somebody said, your sawmill's on fire. And uh, I run down there just as hard as I could and I started to load her. And I was going to try to push a kill away from my mill for it. It had done started on one of the sheds next to the mill. And this, I got almost up again, I seen the fire department come in, and I just backed out of their way and let them put it out. If, if they hadn't got there when they did, we might have lost everything we had. I know it, it was getting serious. And, uh, and you know, really, a, a dry kill, it might not be the best idea in the world to build one out of wood, and that's what we built that night of. But, and, I didn't clean it out. As I, they get a lot of dust in them just over time and all that dust fogging around. And maybe a fan shorted down. I, I don't know what happened, but it, it sure burnt to the ground. And uh, it, it was a nice little kill. Was a, I forget the number right now. I just know it was a now. <clears throat> and I contacted now and they sent me all the paperwork on it and stuff out of, you know troubleshooting all that stuff for real nice people but yeah dry kill's a good choice you can't you know, they, there's a lot of ways you can spend your money if you've got a sawmill to make money and that'd be one of them you know and uh, for dry kill wood for the smaller cabinet shops and stuff like that it sells real good there's two or three cabinet shops I sold a lot of wood to and uh, you know like like that wood well, they've, they've got some forms and stuff on there about dry kiln. You can learn a lot. And they've also got the prices what kill dried lumber is selling for. But now I, they're a little bit high, but I'm, you know you're talking about small quantities. But uh, I sold a lot of kill dried stuff and done right well with it. I miss my dry kill. I wish we still had it. And Mother, she never did like it. And why, I don't know. She just did not like that thing. She, she told me that they said I don't miss it a bit, but you know, all you had to do is roll the lumber in there and let it let it dry and pull it back out. There wasn't no work to it. I guess that's why she didn't like it. She liked stuff that stays work well. Did. But anyway, and uh, it was a dehumidification kill, and the water run outside of it in a hose, and I'd always put a five gallon bucket there, and it was amazing how much water had been a thousand feet of lumber. If memory serves me right, it's right at 50 gallons and come out of a thousand feet. That's a lot of water for no more lumber than what that is. But uh, we had real good luck with that thing. And I, I miss it. I wish uh, a body really needs about two or three of them units, and then that way you can sort of, you know, if you've got a smaller operation, you you can still kill a lot and, and have different species and stuff. But that's something for you to think about. Is to, way to get rid of your higher grade and, and reap the true value of it, you know. For most cabinet shops and stuff, won't buy grain lumber, and I don't blame them. If you can't build cabinets out of stuff, it's not killed right. And, you know, if you get you a good dry kill, you can kill dry as good as anybody else can. And that one I had, <coughs> see, there's more to, to doing it than just kill drying it. You've got to condition it after it's dry. 
and get the stress out of it. If you don't, you start ripping it and stuff, it'll start warping and cupping and all that stuff. And it conditioned that lumber as good as any I ever seen. And the way it done it, you just cut it off and left the fans on it for a couple of days and just let that air cool down and circulate through it. And we took a bunch of poplar one time and ripped it into one by twos for a lady to build picture frames out of. And uh, it didn't warp, it didn't do nothing. For my lumber done real good after this dry kill. I was always proud of that. And uh, a friend of mine, I I got him enough cherry to build cabinets in his house. Boy, that's some of the prettiest cabinets you've ever seen in your life. And they, you know, the cabinet makers that used it said that was some of the best cherry they ever used. So it's just a matter of learning now how to do it, you know, and, and following through. But that's something for you to think about. And, and if you want to solar dry kill, you know, do a little bit of research on it. For I didn't do that much. Some people say that they don't dry it good. Some says they do an excellent job. So, you know, you just be the judge of that. But I do know when you dry it, it dries it slow. And that, that would make me think it'd be less stress on it. And uh, like if you use solar powered fans and stuff, you, you've got no money in it other than just buying it. Like mine was electric. It, it cost like 100 Either hundred or hundred and fifty dollars for to kill it, so you know. That's something to think about. Well that's enough of my rambling on and maybe it'll warm up next week to where I won't be stir crazy. And me and mother can saw a little bit for she's gonna freeze to death and get frostbit out there if she can't stay in the house and it's down to about eight or ten degrees now. And uh, maybe it'll warm up next week. We've got a couple of orders and She's getting real antsy about that. For, and I am too. We need to get them out. So maybe it'll warm up. Talk at you later. Bye.